Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Select Board. Today's date is uh, June 27, 2022. Please call to order at uh, 6.32. Um, we have a pretty short uh, agenda this evening. Basically, we, um, we're going to talk about sewer, uh, little ARPA, meeting room technology, and then the board's going to go into executive session to get updated on some information from our town and town administrator concerning uh, houses and purchases, etc. So, first thing up is minutes from June 13th. I'll entertain a motion. I motion we accept the minutes from June 13th. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made seconded to accept June 13th as presented. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, we got a 3-0 vote on that. Next up is sewer discussion. Tonight we are fortunate to have the uh, esteemed former resident of the town of Sunderland, Tom Zemnowski, to talk to us. Thomas, what do you like to talk about sewers? Well, I think that um, when I brought this up, um, Chef, what was it, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, or whatever? Uh, yeah, 10 years ago when the report was finished. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't say a good 10 years ago, but then you know, they, uh, a year before that, you know, brought it up in the reports and stuff like that there. Um, mentioned the fact about uh, extending the sewer lines down to the southern part of town and uh, not primarily for Hepburn Dr Drive but for the southern part of town. You, uh, the sewer commissioners, brought that to the town meeting, uh, approved X amount of money for uh, a survey or a, a engineering report. That was brought to a, a meeting and all we heard was that it was going to be very expensive. Well, you know, the time has come and the, the day of reckoning has come, at least for me, uh, selling our house on um, Pepper and Drive, that at this point here, the, uh, the price of a sewer replacement for our house, uh, which is happening right now, is $35,000. And I look at all the other houses that are about the same age, a little younger or a little older, that within a few years, they're gonna to need to have some sort of replacement. Because from my education that I've got from the Board of Health and the engineers and the other people is that whether A, your septic tank disintegrates and needs to be replaced, or your distribution box disintegrates and needs to be replaced, or your whole system needs to be replaced because it's not now title, it's, it doesn't meet Title V uh, uh, recommendations. Or, so I'm looking at all these other houses that they, they have the humps. You can only take and do, you know, leach fields so many times, and some of the smaller pieces of property that are designed for, you know, more compact living space or whatever, you know, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a disaster, you know, a financial disaster for these uh, residents that will be coming up. So I just take, I want to bring it to your attention that yes, we're moving out. I was dreading this day. We're going to miss you going. Huh? We're miss you going. Hmm? We're going to miss your moving out. I, I bet you will, yeah. No, no. <laughs> you know, um, I was just saying to Jeffrey, what, what was that, Jeffrey, about the great job that you did with the fireworks? Yeah, and, uh, on yeah, the three, yeah, yeah. On the 300? Yeah. Because cause I, 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 I've seen a yeah. lot of people not yeah. even yeah. come half as good as what you did, Tommy. Yeah. And, uh, well, it was a team effort, and, you know, this FCAT thing, and, you know, everything else, and so on and so forth, and blah, 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 recreation. I could go on and on and whatever, but... It, you know, it's 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 very discouraging uh, that it's it, it's come to the point where you know the people that live next door to the sewer treatment plant, knowing that it's only being half used, and no effort is being made for looking for money to take and at least expand the sewer line piece by piece or section by section. 
We've talked about this before that, you know, the old people, well, the old sewer lines here, they pay a certain rate. Well, if we extend it, well, they're not going to want to take and pay for that extension. Well, that's fine. Have part A here is the old one, part B is the next section or whatever. But um, you know, my my thing is, I just want to I just want to take and vent a little bit, knowing that you know, uh, Sunland has been very progressive in the library, in the school, doing up the sidewalks, doing this and doing that. But there has never been anything to take and even attempt to take and say, okay, let's get some grant money like uh, Hatfield did with, I think, USDA uh, money to take and expand their, and improve their sewer uh, lines and stuff like that. And it, it's just, it, it seems like there's a, it's a dead issue. And um, I, I'm looking at, what's, uh, uh, one of the things that I heard on, um, uh, from a person was that the fact that North 116, that uh, apartment complex, they have their own septic system. What's going to happen when that fails? You know, what's a backup plan for that? And that they, that that the town has no responsibility if their system fails. The town has no responsibility to make it make them whole. So they, they would basically they would have to fix it. But they you can't they can't make the town you can't make the town provide them sewer system. Now, do they put any money into a trust fund or a fund or anything yearly? Okay, no. so that's just a rumor. That's just Wait, a rumor. What, what do they put the money into? Tom? I don't know. Uh, so that, you know, in, a, in expectation of it uh, failing to take and contribute to a sewer line going to uh, uh, North 116. They, they, they had, they had, they had come to the town and asked the town if the if the town if the if the town would want to look at putting in a, a line yeah. from there to the wastewater treatment yeah. plant, um, but they weren't going to pay for it. And well, they would pay for it in some way, shape, or form by all of the connections that they would have for it. Correct. They they would pay for that, but. Right. So 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 typically, how, if usually when you when you increase, when you put in a sewer or water or whatever, that it's paid for through what they call a betterment tax. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if in in back in our study when the study was done, the the going to I have to eat these done. And I've got these permit <laughs> Uh, but phase 1A would consist of approximately 14,300 linear feet of proposed gravity sewers and force mains on Howard Hepburn Drive, Calessa Crossroad, Meadowbrook Drive, Valley View Lane, and there would be one pump station in the vicinity of Brown Crossroad, mm -hmm. okay? At that at that time, that was valued at pretty close to what was it, Jeff? I think it was north of six. It was six it was the with the Brown Crossroad. It was five point two eight three million. Okay, one B would actually let me scroll back up here. One B would be almost 30,000 square feet, so five almost five miles of gravity sewer, and that would, the southern end of North Plain Road, mm -hmm. South Silver Lane, Pine Court, Country Lane, Plumtree, Plumtree Road, west of Amherst Road, and that would also need at least by a pump station by Beer Cross, and that would be almost 14 million. Yeah. So, Typically, that the that money, and especially on phase one A, is paid through betterment. Yeah. Now, when you look at that, there there are a lot of houses on Howard Hepburn, Brown Cross, 
Meadow Brook and Valley View yeah. is 14. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. to go from the wastewater treatment plant to those location, you're going to pass a lot of farmland with APR land. Exactly. That can't be developed. Exactly. So I'm, I'm pretty sure those the people that own that land are not going to want to pay better in fees. Yeah. But um, in thinking about it is that if uh, you you got some grant money or whatever, but oh, but understanding that you know we preserve that farmland mm -hmm. and so okay fine you know it's but i would say let betterment pass on that and just pass the cost on to the other users that are tying in because at this point here there's going to, it doesn't look like there's going to be any future development going in and around because they've got pretty much all the all the property throughout the meadows is apr at this point here I agree. But I, you know, I just I can't see that as stopping, you know, the the infrastructure to go through to take and do the septic systems. You can't do the, you know, you can't drain the ditches. You can't dig the ditches. You, so it's you, you get a wet year, we're drowning. You get a dry year, but but you know, and uh, you know, I and I just look at these houses and, you know, the cost that they're going to have to put in, and and, and if that that is even if they don't sell and the things crap out on them you know coughing yeah. up you know 25 30 thousand that's a that's a decent that's a big chunk of change well, I, I agree yeah. it, so. but I, I if if unfortunately and Jeff probably looked at the grant list and you can ask the town of Deerfield about grant money for wastewater improvements yeah. Yeah. There, I don't believe there is a lot right now is there Jeff that you no, uh, not state money, um, but yeah, I think the I looked, I tried to look at the Hatfield one, the USDA, right. and I think that was for a, for their plant. I didn't see them doing more sewer lines, but um, there might be some federal money. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can get USDA money. Yeah, you can borrow it at favorable rates, yeah. right? Yeah. No. So, you know, so just, I mean, if, yeah. if, if the residents in the area want to come, come forward and, and, and say that we want to do this, sure, I, I would, I would, I mean, it, it, that five million is probably ten or more. Well, I think now, we, I, we, I, I'll, I'll, I don't have a problem doing it. We, we never got traction, Tom, right. when we talked yeah. about it 10, yeah. 12 years ago. Yeah. So if, if people want to come and say, hey, let's, let's do that, and understanding now, should somebody in North Sunderland pay for the sewer extension? And no. no, no, and 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 that's that's been so it'd be the people yeah. that that are affected. We're we going to say that a lot of the, of the the developments that we're talking about though are getting just at the end of their lives in terms of the sewage right now. Where ten years ago that wasn't as much of a case. And I know that at least in our little area, there's been a bunch of houses that have had to go in and put on those mounds you're talking about because the regulations have changed. Um, it's a you know detraction you know in terms of the yard. A lot of people have lost whole chunks of their yard to, to these huge mounds. Uh, I think we might find better traction today than we did ten years ago. So I would be I would be totally down with. Yeah, going with they, with that, yeah. If, if if our if our residents want to do something like that, I, we can we can start the process again. I'm not adverse. I mean, that's why we started the last time. Right, right. And because we we talked about it and we said, well, let's let's put some. Let's put some numbers behind the top. And and we thought, I kind of thought of it a million or two, but when all of a sudden it came back at six, it's like, holy moly, how, how did, and, and there just wasn't an appetite for that at the time. And time. at this point here, when you're looking at, I think 10 years ago, we were talking uh, 12 or $18,000 for a new septic system. Yeah. Now with, you know, the perk test, the fees, the Blah blah blah. Yeah. Engineering stuff that was that was close to four thousand dollars, and you know so basically the whole pack the whole package deal was going to be about thirty five thousand, right? And and you know uh, fortunately you know we'll be selling. Uh, we we're not going to have that big of a hump. You know that, but you know they're going to tuck it off to the side. But uh, you know, figure in thirty years, I am. I was surprised when they dug up the uh, the tank and that stuff. How it was crumbling. The distribution box was just 
grip or whatever like that. So, and that was, and that's only been after 30, 31 years. Yeah, I, 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 I wish I could. I love to argue with you, but I can't argue on this yeah. point. Yeah, I, I, but no, like I said, no. Why? Well, I'd love I've to argue. Tom forever. I, I yeah. know. When he I'm worked at John and Rudy's, for God's sake. Yeah. I, I remember when he got his uh, when he got his Red Fire book. I know. I know. Worked for that too. too. I know you did. I actually remember and I, and that. I re you know how long it took him to buy that red car? I remember the car. You know why he got the red car? First, because it faded the, the least out of the different colors, right? <laughs> he he did all that kind. He did all that research. I so. actually remember that car. I remember. I I don't just I I and again I if someone wants it, you're right. If somebody if if our residents want to come down town and talk about that, we we one hundred percent help. Well, unfortunately, I'm leaving, so you know we're not going to be able to rattle too many cages at this point here. But uh, um, you know, we'll miss you. Yeah, that would have been my come back and visit. Oh, huh? uh, back in October. You know, Ma's still here, so that's it. So you know, I don't think they have too many polka dancers in Colorado, do they? Um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. They have a. Uh, do you bring uh, Eddie Foreman out there? Um, no, I think uh, um, uh, uh, Nine Watt um, has. Oh, Chicago. Has, uh, no, 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 Niwat has a, uh, a program throughout the summer, Dancing Under the Stars, and they have all different types of bands coming in, and uh, uh, they have food trucks, and you, it's, a, it's a huge event uh, on, their, on their night when they have Dancing Under the Stars. Um, and off subject, went to Ocean Beach uh, this past week for the uh, uh, Polka Festival, uh, a young couple were dancing around, having one hell of a good time, and I just had to take, I tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around and I says, "If there was a uh, award for happy polka dancers, I says you would win." And I says, "Where are you from?" Nebraska. And I said, "What the hell's in Nebraska?" He says, "Nothing." <laughs> he says, "I got to drive eight to nine hours to get to a good dance." So he says, "Here it is." A long way to go for a polka band. <laughs> yes, it is. But when you met with the polka bug, you know, you, you guys just kind of travel. Yeah, I so, know. There it is, guys. So anyway, it's just vented. I just want to let you know, I think, you know, um, somebody's got to take and get that uh, thing going. And because, you know, the space is getting limited, you know, at some of these places where you have to take and put in the second one. And, um, you know, you're going to put it in your front yard. Can't do it in your side yard, backyard. What are you going to do? So anyways, that's it. But it's been a fun trip. So, anyways, there it is. You got the internet, so we can keep an eye on what's happening with some of Well, Tommy, also, we wouldn't have a lot of what we have here for that. <laughs> so, so. Those microphones have Tom Gnosti <laughs> written all over them, and those lights. Yeah, yeah, but they don't use those lights, you know, they make you look, you know, they make you pop or whatever. Yeah, they pop for me. Yeah, that was quite the trip, FCAP. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, enjoy. Bye, Thank you. Bye, Tabby. Right, take care now, guys. Take care. Take care. Okay. I'm going to go use the toilets downstairs because ours are disconnected. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey. Uh, ARPA discussion. Yes. So we received a proposal to upgrade the technology in this room. Speaking of this room and technology. Oh, this uh, is about 15 years old, so... Yeah, so, so um, we, looking at what uh, Waitley did and what Deerfield did, or what Deerfield is doing, which is copying Waitley, um, asked uh, a vendor to put together what, what something similar, which would be a Meeting Owl Pro. Um, it would be on a tripod. It would probably sit right in front of um, this table. Uh, a desktop computer, a 75 inch TV, and then a cart, um, like the FCAT cart and TV, so that it could be moved out somewhere else and the owl could be moved uh, if necessary. Um, and the total price was a, just shy of $5,000, $4,769.33. Um, and it would just improve sound quality for those who aren't familiar, the Meeting Owl is a 360 degree camera and microphone and it 
picks up who's talking. It's got some amount of intelligence and figures out where they're talking from and focuses the camera on them. Um, so it, it's pretty neat. And uh, FK was talking about upgrading the technology as well in the room. And so, you know, having had a preliminary conversation with Jonathan, thinking that this might um, eliminate the need to upgrade to HD cameras because it would be an HD meeting owl and we could do everything via Zoom and record it and post it online. So, um, wanted to make you aware of that and potential. Do you want to vote? Uh, if you're ready to, I think, yeah. If, you, if you're, we, We've been talking about it for years. I, I, I mean, we, we've been asking FCAT for a long time to do something. Hopefully, the, the object behind the whole thing was FCAT, and, and I wish Tom was still here, was that we would tape as many meetings as possible. And right now we're kind of limited by, by access and people working the control boards and everything else like that. So if we can make it so it's going to be easier and anybody can come in with, 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 with easy directions, being able to do it, why wouldn't we do that? I mean, our, our, our job is to communicate with, and, and people want to watch a meeting and, and, and have it recorded, and they go to the YouTube channel. Why is that a bad thing? Yeah. That's what gov government should be. It, it seems like a reasonable cost. It so I, I, I can tell you that what they did in here was over $5,000. Yeah, and I think Wheatley paid about eight thousand, but I think they got a projector and a couple TVs too. So that that was the other question I wanted to raise: is is one TV enough? One is enough for us to be able to see the screen, but if there are people in the audience, are they going to have to turn a certain way? So you're I, talking about having another screen over there. Um, so yeah, so I, I was thinking not mounted; it would be on the. Tr um, on the cart over there, but they would mount the computer behind it so that it would all be connected. Um, Which will get a price for a second one. For a second TV. Okay. Even if, I even mean, if, meant if we overflowed and we just put it, put it out in the hallway. So the TV was 1800 So, So like when we had the, the town caucus when yeah. the, this room was full. And we were out in the hall. And we could actually have a TV out there so people could see is that would that would it work like that would it be something we could move out into the hallway I think it would depend on whether or not the meeting owl had two connection could connect to two devices um, or we could or we could connect it to a laptop and have them zoom into the meeting that's happening in here and connect the TV that way. So there's certainly workarounds. I don't know if it would be as easy as just dragging the TV out, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if we did two TVs and two carts, that would be another $2,300. So bringing it the total to about 6,500. Yeah, well, and it would probably have some labor additional yeah. labor charge yeah. I, I, I'll entertain a moment again our, our job is to make sure our residents are informed we have something similar to the meeting owl at work that is great you can just, just you know, sign up for the meeting walk in it tracks everyone's faces as they move around it's really a great technology I'm, I'm totally behind that so we would just need the second cart and the second TV. We wouldn't need a second desktop, right? Because the one desktop would be able to handle both. Yeah, and I think I think we have a since we bought all the laptops last two years ago, I guess um, we have a couple of extra, relatively newer desktops that if we wanted to, we could just connect it to that TV yeah. and uh, okay. go from there. So do we want to do a motion like not to exceed us? Seven thousand dollars or something like that. That's put a limit on it, or yeah. all right. So I I motion we move forward with the technology upgrade, not to exceed seven thousand dollars at this time without another vote. Seconded. 
Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Jeff, is that good enough for you? Yes. Uh, just to clarify, using ARPA funds, right? Using ARPA funds. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. And there was something that came up after we posted the agenda that I just wanted to raise, not necessarily for a vote tonight, but for potential consideration, um, which is all the mandated COVID sick time laws have passed. So the federal government said you have to provide 40 hours of additional COVID sick time uh, that has to be used before regular sick time. The state did something similar. They extended it. Both of those laws have passed. So currently anybody who catches COVID, um, at least here, has to use their sick time. Um, and so I just wanted to raise, we could use ARPA funds if we wanted to uh, s set up, I guess I would call it like a COVID sick bank and say, we're gonna dedicate X amount of dollars and once that's out, no more. Um, but just something to think about if that's something that the select board would be interested in for employees who get COVID because they're still required to be out for five days. Okay. So do you have, I mean, like next week, would you be able to come back with a projected dollar amount for something like that? Yeah, I'm, the challenge is it, it's gonna depend on who's out and- Right. Um, so I, yeah, I could talk to Heather about getting sort of an average and say, if we wanted it to be for five employees, get up to five days each, what would that be? Um, just to give you an idea. Yeah, just, it, it's kind of hard when, God, is this gonna cost us $25? Is this gonna cost us $250,000? It's, you know. Yeah. No, this yeah. wouldn't be, sorry to interrupt, but this wouldn't be above and beyond our personnel costs currently. It would just be paying for that, that time of personnel costs from a different pool. Because I mean, a lot, a lot. I mean, if, if we had to hire a, a temp worker, for example, for the school, like a you know, pay for a, a substitute teacher, I can see that being additional cost. But if somebody who is, whose shift isn't going to be covered because they're just going to be out an extra day, they wouldn't normally be. I'm not sure that that's necessarily coming out of. You see what I'm saying? The yeah. So I, I, I think that it would be both. It would be the employee doesn't use their earned sick time. Um, and the town wouldn't pay for the substitute or whoever has, comes in to cover out of the general fund, it would be paid for out of ARPA. Okay. So yeah, there would be a policy decision and a financial decision, okay. making clear. But, but in, in potentially the, the extra ARPA funds could be offset by money not coming out of the general fund if there are circumstances in which that sick time doesn't actually cost more money to the town, it's just a question of where the money is coming from. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. And well, the other concern is that ARPA money is only so so much so long. Right. This COVID, we don't have a end date for that. We don't. Right, but I'm just saying. <laughs> this, Next Thursday, we talk about. <laughs> right, but this. <laughs> Could potentially be something that we need to talk about budget-wise too uh, at another point. I, I think until you better understand COVID, it's awful hard to, to implement any type of program. Yes. So that, that's my own. I mean, I, I guess it, on that vein, if we were going to do this, I would want to make sure that it's clear that this is not in perpetuity. This is like we're doing this right now, but we're not going to because COVID could be around for the rest of our lives and not necessarily Correct. want to be paying for 40 hours a week every week for the rest of their lives when we don't have that in place for the flu or for colds or things like that. Yep. Correct. That's why it's, it's, a, it's a tough, you know, we don't know how long the government's going to say they're entitled to this 40 or... And, and you, have, you, you have COVID that you do have no symptoms. Correct. And that, and that we, we can work from home also. Yep. So how, how do you how do you how do you compensate the worker, Jeff? Jeff I know Jeff. He'd work from home. So what are you going to right. pay him? Right. I think it would be we would have well, to limit it to those who. I have understand, to, but but yeah, yeah. There, 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 there's pop. You know, if you want to put together a policy, that's fine. That we can review. Yep. Okay. Yes. I mean, I think it is fair to say that 
someone getting COVID today is different than someone getting COVID two years ago in terms of the length of time they're going to be out, the the importance of them taking the time out versus showing up to work, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I would I would want to look at that also before we vote on anything. Okay, next. Uh, select board updates. That's all I had for COVID. Nothing else? I mean, you brought that. That wasn't on the agenda. Was it? Yeah, nothing else not okay. on the agenda. Sorry. Select board updates. Nathaniel? Uh, I don't have anything. Crystal? I have nothing. So last last week I had a uh, Stark <coughs> County EMS meeting. Um, basically, our director is going to be out for a, a little while. Uh, he and his partner are, ex are expecting, uh, so we will have a a group who will be running uh, South County EMS. Um, we were talking about a right now our ambulance three ambulance number two has been in the shop or is in the shop because of a warranty issue with the paint on the on the uh, um, the back end not the chassis or the truck but the what do they call that the, the back doors no well, I don't know what you're talking about the back the back, the, back the, the not the back box what do they call the back box of an ambulance miss EMT I could they're, they're, they, they call it something yeah, but the box. Yeah, the box. So there's a there's a paint issue. So they were talking about the third ambulance is a 2007 Sunderland's old ambulance. Um, so they're talking about the replacement, and now the replacement for an ambulance is 600 days. Oh. So we're 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 talking about that. Um, That's so it. We're talking about that. Um, that's that's the next because we are scheduled for replacement in 2025, and it, and the board of oversight kind of thinks it's important to order that in FY 24. But typically, you have to say that the funds are available. So we have to come up with a either you the retained earning, earnings and or the money that's put aside. So that that's what we're dealing with right now. But if there's a 600 day weight on the chassis in the box how's that then uh, we really should look at something second we had a South County Senior Center meeting um, and unfortunately we have not had a place for the staff to call their own for a long time now because the we're the, they don't have the room in the, um, the senior center. Is now in the Holy Family Church area and they can't store anything there. So Jeff um, had talked about uh, a location here in town and it looks like it can be had for a pretty reasonable price but we're having a meeting Wednesday to continue the discussion that we started last week so it'll probably be a lengthy discussion um, on that um, so and where South County EMS not EMS but South County Senior Center is going to exist long term and we started talking about that. So, again, continue. Um, I think that's it. Town administrator. A couple things. Um, at the last meeting, we uh, voted to change the septage rates, and we had a little snafu with the hearing note publication of the hearing notice. So. We're gonna to have to revisit that at the next meeting, um, but hopefully you have all the information and so it, it, it's more of a formality, but it does give the public the opportunity to comment on it and, and more information. So um, I apologize about that, but 
wanted to give a heads up. Um, since we are alternative mosquito plan um, was approved and we were opted out of spraying, there's a couple things that we have to do, including creating informational flyers and handouts. So I've been doing that so that it gets done, it doesn't get forgotten, and it gets done while it's useful and not, you know, in the winter sometime when it wouldn't be. Um, uh, we had also talked um, a while ago about employee wages and um, how, how to figure out changes and talked about uh, employee evaluations. So put together uh, a template evaluation, um, going to send it out. I think, I think the personnel committee is, is relatively happy with it, so I was going to send it out to the department heads to see if they have any comments or feedback, but um, that is something that we can implement and I'm certainly happy to share it with the select board too and, and in case you have feedback on um, the types of questions or how it's how it would proceed um, I will do that and then the last thing is that this Thursday is the small town administrators um, annual meeting the small town administrators of Massachusetts annual meeting uh, in West Bridgewater and they're three uh, HR focused things and then a legislative update that they're going to do. Um, so I will be there on Thursday. <coughs> In West right. Bridgewater. In West Bridgewater. We'll have fun. Thank you. Okay. Public comment? No. Paula was going to go for a walk so she left me here. I don't think Dave here. <laughs> okay. And I thought I would it would be a good time for me to thank the selectmen, which I used to do, but got out of the habit. And during COVID, after the town meeting coming by and just saying how much the town should appreciate what you guys do for the next to nothing for conversation. So I'll work that into the conversation. But just go left here. So thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, we are going to go into executive session. We need to take a vote. And this is pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 38, Section 21, Paragraph 6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of your property. If the, declare, if the chair declares that open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, the chair so declares. Roll call vote. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Owner. Aye, Chris Hildrick, job bye. Uh, Nathaniel Gregory Waring. I, Tom Fighting Kevitz. We will return to open session to simply vote ourselves out of the meeting. We will go down stairs. <laughs>